Life Choice was a very interesting project in that the developer in this case was a Dr. Dahl, Eldon Dahl, and he had a PhD in naturopathic medicine. Um, had been practicing for, for uh, since 2000 and um, had basically developed some new chemical formulas and, and ideas for improving uh, different products. The case in question here, there were, there were three different projects in the court case, but we'll just talk about one uh, where he was trying to do uh, a development to replace an, an intravenous drug with an oral drug for arterial plaque reduction. Um, we're told that in this case, he was very passionate uh, about the field of science and had studied it for several years. He, he quoted numerous articles. He talked to component suppliers. He talked to various experts. Um, and he'd identified areas of uncertainty, including antagonistic effects of ingredients, um, effects of the chelation process, and, and other factors that might, in fact, have upstream or downstream effects on the design of his experiments and thus create the technological uncertainty. So we're told that the case in question, he wanted to reduce arterial plaque. He wanted to do it with an oral solution. Um, he had studied the, the subject matter immensely over the years. Um, He'd even referred to doctors uh, from other companies, uh, articles translated from German um, and, and such to benchmark the state of the art. And basically at this point, the CRA recognized that there were um, technological uncertainties that perhaps existed um, and that he analyzed and simulated them in his mind. However, it was the view of the judge, quote, it is the absolute absence of testing of the natural health products by life choice after their formulations were hypothesized that is fatal to this appeal. So effectively what Dr. Dell did is he, he, developed the, he developed the formulations, he sent them for uh, approvals to Health Canada, and if they were approved, he would then go forward and, and, and uh, conduct the research. So the conclusion was, it's not the absence of clinical testing, it's the absence of any form of testing in the judge's eyes that could be seen as systematic. Now, my position on this case is, is that um, I don't entirely agree with it as a practitioner. When I read the law and I look at past, past precedents, there was a very interesting case called Hun Metapharma, where, where a taxpayer in a very similar position had analyzed different alternatives, just as Dr. Dahl had done, but not at any level, uh, <clears throat> not, not at the same level that he had, nor the same level of expenditure. And the taxpayer won because the judge in that case read the, reading, read the wording of the act and the definition of SRND, particularly in 248 sub 1 of the act. And one of the things that the act says is that it's work done by experimentation or analysis is the exact word in the act. And when making a ruling on this, the courts are supposed to read the words literally in the act with no hidden meaning. And in Hun Meta Pharma, the judge acknowledged that the, the words were not um, analysis and experimentation. They were analysis or experimentation. Now, it seems clear to me that, that Dr. Dahl had done considerable analysis here. He just hadn't done the experimentation point. Um, uh, as the CRA and, and in fact the courts are requiring uh, now. So their justification is that the, the five questions posed in a landmark case by Judge Bowman that we'll talk about briefly um, require there to be a, both a hypothesis and systematic investigation. And so the term became what's systematic investigation and can analysis in fact be systematic or do you actually need to go to trials? or clinical trials as a CRA is proposing? And if so, uh, how is this um, ruling consistent with prior rulings or is this a shift in opinion on how we're in interpreting uh, the legislation? <clears throat>